Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the appointed hour of 5 o'clock p.m. having been reached, I welcome everyone to this meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter. As chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I call this meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this public hearing of the Town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which provided on the Town of Amherst website. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the Design Review Board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, please say aye or yes to acknowledge your attendance for the record. Catherine Porter, aye. Lindsay Schnarr? Aye. Okay, Janet Marquard? Yes. Erica Zikos. Yes. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting in October 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under Section 3.2 of the Zoning Bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center. The design review board overlay district, no, the design review overlay district and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant, board, applicable, applicable land use board, and building Commissioner. Tonight's agenda for September 8th, 2020 is as follows. DRB FY 2021-01, Jones Library, 43 Amity Street, to review the proposed location and layout of the temporary tent located at 43 Amity Street. DRB FY 2021-02, Town of Amherst various locations to review the proposed locations and design at the proposed wayfinding way signs. That completes the opening statement. Do we have somebody here from the library? Let me, uh, yes, let me, I'm bringing up Sharon Sherry. 
Uh, I'm going to make her a panelist, George Hicks. And then another person is labeled as Jones Library. Um, Sharon, are you, are you there? Hold on a second. Sorry. I'm here. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having us. I'm actually going to, um, George is actually going to be the one who gives the presentation and I'll just be here for follow-up questions if you have any. Sounds good. Yeah, that's me. Um, do you want me to just go right ahead? Yes, go ahead. All right, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. I've been using so many different computers for Zoom meetings these past several months, and I have two laptops on my desk right now, so. Um, <laughs> one of them will work. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I figured in case one dies, right. the other one's there. Damn. Um, so yeah, anyways. Um, we submitted an application in order to put a temporary tent in front of the library so that we can offer as many library services as possible right now. Um, one of our biggest concerns is that we are not able to provide computer service uh, for patrons who do not have computers at home or do not have internet at home. That's one of the biggest concerns we've had. Uh, and we have hopes that if we put a tent in front of the library as a temporary structure, that we can at least provide those services right now, as well as other potential services. Uh, the tent itself, I believe on the application, we had it as a 12 by 40. Um, after talking to uh, Rob Mora and Jeremiah and the fire department, we can actually increase the width of that to 14 feet. Uh, my reasoning for going with the 12 foot was that I wanted to ensure that we had enough space on both sides in order for, uh, for tethering and all of that. Uh, there's not a lot of frontage in front of the library. Uh, we have about 20 feet before we start hitting garden in front of the library. Mm -hmm. But if we opted to go with a steel frame tent versus a pole tent, we can save some width and we can go a little bit wider. Uh, so the actual tent that we'd be looking to install is 14 feet by 40 feet. Um, the location of the tent is really in the only spot that we have on library property that's level and open enough in order to put a tent. Uh, so if you're facing the library, thank you. If you're facing the library, it would be to the right-hand side of the stone sidewalk going in the front door and the tent would go from that sidewalk to a few feet short of where the outside book drop is uh, and the plan is that people would enter one side and go out the other side uh, in order to uh, keep us legal you know two sides of the tent need to be open at all times we do have to maintain social distancing inside the tent so with a tent of this size, we can have 10 patrons seated at tables and they would still be socially distant six feet and there would be enough room for a staff member. Um, we have already looked into electrical and what it would take to put it out there. I've already run by the initial concept with the electrical inspector in town and they gave it their blessing with a, you know, a couple of questions. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at right now. The town itself is opting to purchase the tent using COVID funds. Um, so the library isn't purchasing the, purchasing the tent ourselves. It's going to be a town-owned tent. Uh, and Jeremiah LaPlante is in the process of purchasing that tent. So we don't have a specific installation date if everything gets approved. Uh, hopefully that you will approve and endorse this and we'll keep moving forward. We're trying to get it all done as soon as possible so we can get as much done before, unfortunately, snow flies and we won't be able to use a tent out front anymore. Um, so with that, I'm open to questions, comments, anything like that. Yeah, sure, but, it's sure. the idea that all the stations will have computers or laptops or something at them. Is it primarily for that? For right, primarily it's gonna be used for laptops. Uh, the laptops have been purchased already, uh, and at the end of the day, you know, while the equipment will come back inside the building and the tables will get taken down, we'll be using specific folding tables for this. 
uh, that'll be lightweight and easy to bring in and outside. So the tent will be empty uh, when we're not providing computer service. Um, mm -hmm. And that initially was a slight concern with us. So we talked to the police department about it and we know that they can step up the patrols and there's tents all over downtown right now. So it's something that they're aware of and that's something they keep tabs of anyways. Great, thank you. Yes, Erica. First, I just want to say I'm so happy to see this happening. I know how valuable the library is to folks in town and to provide this service that's been absent for so many is um, really critical. And um, I am happy to support it. And I, I do have some questions, though. And I think in your application, you mentioned that the, um, the tent would be open. <sighs> I'm sorry, I can't remember which sides of the tent will be open. And I'm just thinking about flow and also about um, signage. And if it's, yeah. um, because there's a there's a, a look and feel to that that we'd like to see be consistent and informative. I would think. Right. Uh, the short ends of the tent would be open. Mm -hmm. the, the long ends of the tent would be closed. So the side of the tent facing Amity Street would be would have a side on it. Uh, and the, the narrow ends would be open. One would be an entrance, one would be an exit. What we were planning on using uh, while I was collecting all kinds of COVID stuff through March and May, I came across these large uh, yellow plastic arrows that I figured I would use for entrance and exit. It's, you know, it's a, it's a universal symbol. It's not the most gorgeous thing, but it will definitely get the point across. Um, and obviously there would be a staff person in, the, in there as well okay. to help direct the flow to make sure the people are only going in one way and coming out another way. Will there be any, um, anything on the outside of the tent that says that this is a temporary extension of the Jones Library into the lawn? We haven't gotten that far. Um, we could certainly come up with a banner or something. Uh, right now, we're relying an awful lot on uh, social media and internet to do our advertising. But of course, if people don't have internet access or a computer, they wouldn't see all of that. So yeah, there's definitely a plan to have some kind of signage and a way to, to let people know what this is. I mean, we're also thinking just having a tent outside is going to make people curious and want to come in and see what's going on. Uh, but yeah, definitely there need, there does need to be some kind of signage. Maureen, I, <coughs> yes? I, could you, un, am I mute, unmuted? No, no, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, I wanted to, to ask about the, uh, were you having any auxiliary heating in there or you're really just counting on good weather to, uh, you know, for people can be comfortable and then when it gets cold, you will close the, you will take the, take the tent down or just close it for the season? Um, we are hopeful to go as long as we possibly could. I mean, we're all from New England. We know what could happen. Uh, yeah. We could have snow in October. It could be 80 degrees in the middle of November. Yeah. So we're kind of playing it by ear. Uh, we did specify the tent out so that if we opted to put some type of space heater in there that we could do it. Um, we certainly, you know, once it gets too cold um, yeah, okay. for people to be comfortable, right. we will have we will have to stop using it. Yeah. Well, I agree with Erica. I mean, it's really something that we we need, and we can argue about it. Uh, it's so, it's so essential for so many patrons to have that access to a computer. Does a tent have flaps on all sides or so allow for airflow or how, what are you thinking about um, for the help uh, of the? Right, we, we specified the tent that, it, that we're purchasing it with all four sides. We can only use two sides. Um, the, the sides though, they can be raised if we wanted to, say if we had okay. an especially warm day, we, they're all you know adjustable. You could either lift it or you know, fold back half of it. Mm -hmm. um, the sides aren't permanent. Okay. So 
if we wanted to open the thing wide open, we could, as long as, you know, the sun glare doesn't right. affect the computers themselves. But the, the entire narrow sides would be wide open. So it should provide plenty of airflow. Any other comments from it or questions? I, I also think this is a great, um, a great service that you're providing and wondered if, um, it sounds like the tent is the plan, but we've seen a lot of really creative um, approaches to advertising and just kind of uh, community support in some of the outdoor spaces that have been set up downtown. And so if there is an opportunity to perhaps increase the, just the, the way in which this this tent or whatever kind of enclosure or uh, structure that you put up could could include some kind of like playful or um, library oriented, reading oriented, community oriented um, art or information. I think that that would be a nice touch. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It's It's been a learning process for all of us. Um, just just the simple fact of getting it out there for people who are picking up and returning books right now uh just coming up with creative signage like this book is out now and you can check it out and just figuring out where those signs are most effective we've moved it around three times so far and um there the librarians are constantly thinking of ways that we can promote this and promote everything else that we do at the same time so yeah i think that um if we get a tent out there, I think you'll see a lot of creative advertising uh, that that will definitely get it out there to the public. Question? Any other question? Jan, go ahead. Yeah. I'll, make, I'll move that we approve the library's application for a temporary tent on the front lawn. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? Okay, Eric, a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, you do to... Uh, I need to go do a roll call. Roll call. Need to do a okay, roll call. here's a roll call. Uh, Catherine Porter, aye. Lindsay Schnarr. Aye. aye. Okay. Janet. Aye. And uh, Erica. Aye. Okay. I guess it's unanimous. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now we have, I'm going to pull Ben up and Catherine uh, and um, uh, Chris. Sorry. And it looks like we have Seth. So this is for uh, the uh, signage, yes. wayfinding signs. Should we just start? Shall I read this? Go ahead, Chris. No, you don't need to read that, Catherine. Okay. All right. Hello. How are you, everybody? Glad to okay. See you. It's Seth. I'm so glad Seth could join us. He's our designer. Um, so I'm Chris Brestra, planning director, and I wanted to give you a bit of history about this project for a while. Um, the proposal will be presented by Ben Breger after I give this a little bit of history. So we started working on this wayfinding uh, design sign project in 2015 with a grant that we received from the state. And we partnered with the bid and we hired a designer called Mark Faverman. He's a designer based in Boston. And um, he was called upon to design a wayfinding sign system for downtown. And at the end of that project, um, he came up with a family of signs that we liked very much, but we weren't fond of the design that Mr. Faverman came up with. So in 2017, the town hired Seth Gregory, based in Northampton, who developed a sign design that the town preferred. And in July of 2017, three years ago, a little more than three years ago, we presented Seth Gregory's design family of signs to the design review board. And we received general comments about the design. And then in the spring of 2018, 
We received funding from town meeting to fabricate and install the signs and we proceeded to work further with Seth to revise and refine the design. In the meantime, the bid contracted to fabricate and install the signs that are currently in the roundabout at um, Triangle Street and East Pleasant Street. And these signs are different from the ones that were presented to the DRB in 2017. So you're looking at an image of the, um, the roundabout sign here. In the spring of 2019, we presented a revised welcome sign and a post directional sign to the DRB. And the new, new design, as you see here, was similar to that installed by the bid and different from the sign that Seth had originally designed. Um, so when we presented this to the DRB, the DRB came forth with a lot of feedback. Um, the DRB preferred the signs that were first reviewed by them in 2017. The DRB didn't like the butterscotch color of the lettering or the banding at the bottom of this sign. The DRB didn't like the rust colored background but preferred the darker brown espresso color of the background and the green band below the sign instead of the yellow band. The DRB wanted a sharper contrast between the brown background and the ghost image of the town logo and the word welcome. And the DRB preferred a band that sits below the sign rather than the band that is part of the sign. So we're back to present a revised welcome sign with revisions based on your comments from March of 2019. And these revisions will bring the design back closer to the 2017 version. I don't believe that you had any comments about the design of the post-directional signs. So those are pretty similar to what you um, saw in 2017. In addition, we're presenting locations for the welcome signs and the post-directional signs. And we'd like your recommendations and comments about the locations. So now if you don't have any questions for me, I'd like to ask Ben to present the new sign design and their locations. <clears throat> Great, thanks Chris for that background. Um, so my name is Ben, I'm a planner with the town um, and I'm glad Seth is here as well, um, who's the designer of the signs. Um, so I'm planning on kind of just walking through the um, locations for the welcome signs, um, the new design for the welcome signs, and then um, the locations for the directional post signs. And um, yeah, Seth, you can feel free to jump in at any, any time, um, but I'll, I'll move through this now. So uh, this is the new design for the welcome signs. Um, it has a darker uh, brown background, uh, more contrast with the lettering, and then a green band at the bottom that's separated from the um, sign itself. And um, we're proposing four of these um, around town at some of the key gateways to downtown. Um, this would say, you know, obviously this arrow would change depending on where, which direction you're approaching town center. Um, and there's one sign uh, where the Emily Dickinson house is that would say town center and Emily Dickinson Museum um, as banners below here. Um, so maybe I'll just do a quick flashback to the previous sign just to kind of so you guys can see the differences. Um, and I think, you know, Seth is proposing, you know, a stone, stone wall at the foundation just to um, have, a, have a nice base as well. So um, I'm happy to like stop here if there's any comments or questions, but I'm, I can also move along for the, uh, you know, the locations as well but Jim noise on this um did you drop the welcome to on purpose stuff or was it just forgotten uh, I'm, I'm sure that was intentional <laughs> um <laughs> i recall the conversation over the course of you know two to three years now but um Perhaps Chris does, or I can't recall. I like having the two there because otherwise it's like, welcome Amherst. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. 
it's certainly something that can go back in. That's not something I have right. to talk about. I figured maybe it was just dropped off. Yeah. I, I actually, just to like, I think it's, I think I can, <clears throat> I can imagine it just being like a welcome. And um, there's something, I, I can see both sides. I, I can see the kind of logic of the phrasing welcome to, but I also kind of appreciate just the simplicity of just the welcome. Mm -hmm. So right, I, can I, imagine, I can imagine an intentional approach to that as well. So just a thought. Well, it's better than it saying Amherst, Massachusetts welcomes you, <laughs> like, the, yeah. like the state signs say. Yeah. I think the logic behind um, this approach is that you're, you're certainly going to read Amherst first. So um, the welcome to, right, would be creating a phrase, welcome to Amherst, but you're highly unlikely to actually read it in that order. And so then it becomes a little awkward because <laughs> your brain's going, Amherst, Massachusetts, welcome to. Um, so in this way, you know, anticipating that, that experience of someone reading the sign, it's, it's sort of just treated as an aside, right? It's just, it's complimentary to the information you're getting and it's not intended as like a, <clears throat> a, a linear phrase that you're reading. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, I have to say, if this is an improvement over the one that's down by the uh, rotary. Uh, first time I saw that one, I nearly wrecked my car because we had never had any input into that sign. But yeah. actually, the the what you're referring to, Jan, and then the town shield are to me they're just blurs. If anybody's driving by, I I didn't even know what that was until I got my really got up close. I guess you have to have it, but how many people are even going to see that that's welcome? That just looks like, you know, just static in the background. And then the town shield. Um, uh, I don't know if you need it at all, but that's, uh, you know, I wouldn't vote against it if everybody supported it, but I'm not sure all that stuff in the background. On the roundabout, you don't see things. But if you're sitting at a signal, or you're walking, or you're getting off a bus okay. in another yeah. location, I think you would. And I believe the shield is to coordinate across all the signs to have a. a, a yeah, a, yeah, know, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I do think too that uh, you know the signs are um, they're here to welcome newcomers to town, but those of us who live here also we'll see them daily. And so the fact that there's kind of a, a layered quality to the design, a richness to it, you know, makes it something that, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're willing to spend some time with, you're willing to see over and over again. It isn't merely for um, the visitor. It emerges a little bit. Right, yeah. So I mean, I see that point. It seems like there's, if you all are favoring butterscotch and brown, is there some reason? If, with the whole color palette, you know, that might have been an option why you went to Brown. Hello. <laughs> um, uh, I, are we, I'm, as far as colors, are you, are you referring to this darker one as brown? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I this, mean this was the, the same yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know the, the well, who made that decision? Brown? My, well, my impression is that th so this was more or less the intended original design. That the this is a, maybe a shade darker than than what was originally proposed. Um, the roundabout sign was okay. developed with the with the um, with the bid, right? With the I guess so. We never bid. saw it. So. And so there was some um, alterations made. Um, based on on their preferences. So you're going to replace those roundabout signs with this one? Is that the plan, uh, Chris? If we get enough money, we might be able to do that. Well, but... I, I think it's a start there first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> obviously, you know, <laughs> I really don't like those signs. <laughs> no. for, I don't like the color, but they look they look like they've just slapped up on a piece of board. You know, they don't even have a. Well, I won't get into it, but. I hope you find those, out. May I just say those weren't installed by the town? I, those were yeah. a joint effort of the bid, and I believe that um, one of the de developers and property owners in the downtown 
Oh, is that how they came about? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that was um, I see. Okay. kind of a separate project. Yeah, um, obviously. That the town so, is yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah. And they they were very eager to get it installed quickly because they were anticipating um, parents and families coming into town not knowing where the downtown or the yeah. town center was. Well, so, so they jumped okay. the gun in a way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there should be some sort of legislation. I know we have a lot of laws, but that should be good one too. You can't put up a sign without somebody giving permission. But. I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, that's just maybe me, but. Um, so I, I think just in the interest of time, focusing on what you're presenting here, I mean, I do, I do really like the response that you have shown us in terms of um, the feedback we provided with the the separation of the band that really relates back to the overall town uh, wayfinding signs. And I think that that's a helpful element. Um, and it's, it's very clear, the text is crisp. I think the design is simple. Um, so, you know, I think that we're potentially responding a little bit to the fact that there was some concern over the color um, that hasn't been modified and so while I don't have a, a strong opinion about the colors um, as they're presented here, one thing that does kind of catch my eye, um, just from a design standpoint, that's probably, maybe it, maybe it doesn't bother others, but it's just that um, the white font of the town center with respect to the kind of cream font um, of the Amherst, Massachusetts, just feels a little bit like, maybe too close like the cream versus white and so I question that just a, a bit like is there a way to to bring those closer together or perhaps make more contrast so that um, they don't look like they're kind of trying to be the white versus cream um, conflict so that's my only real concern here otherwise I think it I think it reads clearly and it looks it looks nice that was something we brought up last time too with all the other comments was the cream versus the white. I remember talking about this before, um, and I still think it's a concern. I don't particularly like the cream with the brown. I feel like it, I remember saying this at that meeting, it looks uh -huh. like the 70s. Yeah. Um, I'd rather just see white on Amherst. Yeah, I agree. But. I mean, is that a, so is that a, a, a thought that we might make that recommendation or are these already is it already set in stone that we can't? That can always make more changes. I know that's <laughs> what we do best. <laughs> you can make the recommendation. Um, this set of signs, though, has been under development since 2017, this particular set, and it's gone through a lot of iterations and a lot of review, and the Design Review Board has reviewed it. This is the third time that the Design Review Board has seen yeah. us, so I think um, in the interest of, you know, actually acting on this project, it's probably better to not make too many changes at this point. Um, the town manager is really eager to get something installed and I'm afraid we're gonna lose our funding if we dally too much longer. So um, I, I feel like it's probably a good idea to try to get the white lettering closer to the cream or some balance between the two. But I think making a, a really big change, like changing the lettering on the big sign to white would be really a bridge too far at this point. Well, it could be, it could be worth, um, so is the cream color uh, the same cream that we responded to last time, Chris? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, I think that there's obviously a reason why you held on to it. So I don't know that it's worth us belaboring that. And maybe it's worth considering um, if, if that is the color um, for the town center lettering, or I, I guess I'm curious if, if that's a given that that color is held for the main part of the sign, like what are, what are people's thoughts on the options for the coloring of the lettering below? I think you could tint the white slightly towards the cream, but not that much because then it wouldn't be as visible. It's so small. Yeah. That contrast with the green. Right. Yeah. 
any other thoughts people want to uh, and this is uh, just Chris is this sign going to be one that we discuss that's going to be at the what, foot of Amity and University is that this sign is going to go in three locations and then a modified version of this sign will go in the fourth location and Ben might be able to show you the modified version well he's he's probably going to show you where the three are going and then um, okay. where the one is going by the Dickinson Museum okay I would I guess before we talk about location, I would just, I'll just chime in and just say that um, I definitely defer to Chris on process. I don't, I'm not as embedded in, in sort of the nuance of making the implications of making changes, but I would say um, just purely from an aesthetic point of view, I, I appreciate that observation. I think it's, um, it's valid. It's not something I had, heard before so that might have gotten lost in translation but um i would be in favor of changing the lettering on the sign to white and i don't think it would have any negative implications or complications for the process for the fabrication or anything like that um uh yeah and i so i would i would prefer to do that than to try to add color to the directional signs because we get into a variety of backgrounds colors and I, I I'm not as confident in how well those are going to work as any color we're adding to white we're reducing the contrast mm -hmm. and um, you know you're just creating some more potential for uh, um, you know clashing of, of colors with like creams plus we've got purple burgundy green a couple blues a couple, you know other things yeah. like that so um, I think we stayed away from the white initially because we were thinking of a very warm kind of parchment and brick and steel palette, right? Just all these kind of this local vernacular. And, um, but uh, yeah, not being uh, around in the seventies, it did not <laughs> resonate with me that way. I wasn't like, uh oh, cream is bringing us back to the seventies. So I, 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 the logic was that white is too, White might might cheapen it in some way, might make it feel it's too predictable or it's too just plain. But I also can appreciate the uniformity and the consistency and the crispness and the clarity and all that. So I'm indifferent. Right. I, that's all to say that. <laughs> I like the warmth. There's a, a coffee palette. I think you've mentioned that the brown is espresso and that planted a seed for me. There's, it, there is a, a warmth to it that I appreciate. I do, um, uh, the package that was sent to us before the meeting includes the, the mock-up of the sign in front of the Emily Dickinson Museum with all of the background information, the green of the grass and the brown of the fence and the trees and what have you. And um, I think that it's kind of, uh, the distinction between the white and the cream is a little less in your face than what we're seeing here on the plain white background. Um, I don't have a significant issue with it because I see the town center portion of the sign as being related to this other part of the, the family um, and it's isolated, it's kind of held down below. I don't have a big issue with it. Yeah, I think, um, I wonder if there, I mean, if, if there is still room for discussion, I would say that my suggestion would be to see if there is a, 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 a more crisp, less buttery uh, cream that might, might work with that um, town center um, signage that's, that's closer to white, maybe still has a little warmth. Um, I don't think it's a huge issue, and if it's going to, you know, cause problems with funding, Chris, I, I wouldn't push it at the cost of that. But I also think that if there is a way to resolve it that isn't a big headache, then um, it might be nice to find a color that works for both that's in the white home family. Yeah. I would agree. I'd like to see it move from that particular butterscotchy look. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that Seth could do that and bring it back to a DRB meeting? fairly soon? I can do my end fairly mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, that's not a problem. Could it go by email or does it have to be an open meeting? 
It could go by email. Yeah, you can, you can each um, say, you can each uh, send me a separate email saying yes or no, if you like it or not, the new revision. Okay. Okay, so what's the pleasure? Is that, can we put that in the form of a recommendation mm -hmm. that uh, we would like to uh, see the sign one more time? And then, assuming then that we weighed in and agreed that this would be a, what we see in, in the new version would be the best that we feel we can do. So you feel like you can see this in an email format and not um, as a meeting, or would you prefer to have it in a meeting? Would we get the same clarity on an email that we have here? Sure, it'll just be okay. a slide. It'd be the same yeah. thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, how, about, how about this? How about if, you know, if I receive positive feedback from each of you, then it can be done by email. If for some reason each of, each of you are like, wait a second, <laughs> discuss this, then okay. we could yeah. hold, we could schedule a meeting. Okay. And not this is on Zoom, we can schedule these pretty quickly. That's right. I don't mean to, um, cause issues but like I think we're going to see the Emily Dickinson sign momentarily and the whole question of white mm -hmm. expands as soon as we do that so mm -hmm. um, okay so let's take a look at that one is hold that on our process for a moment okay mm -hmm. okay, let's okay see. so I'll, I'll move through this slideshow I think I had like a all four locations and I think the Emily Dickinson one was like, oh there it is perfect uh, okay zoomed right to it so yeah this is basically um, to orient you, this is at the intersection of Triangle Street and Amity Street, or I guess it's Main Street, Triangle and Main. Uh, this is the sign that's currently there, and we'd be replacing that sign um, with this. Can you show us the uh, sign that's there now? Yeah. So that has a white background on part of it and a kind of a, I don't There's know. A cream. That's a little faded. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, color of the fence. Um, can I just ask a quick question? I, I believe this, if I, if I can remember correctly, that the Emily Dickinson Museum was coded as a light tan in the wayfinding signs. Um, and I and I believe that the color decisions seem to indicate like different types of locations. So perhaps like the historic mm -hmm. locations were a tan color, and other you know campus were others. So I wonder about um, perhaps bringing bringing that color. And I don't know if we have a quick reference, but bringing the color of the historic uh, wayfinding signs here, and that might help. Because uh, I had a similar kind of like moment of pause when I first saw this, that the black on white, it just, it reads much more, um, it, it kind of feels like a different language, um, a little out of place compared to the wayfinding signs, which I think have a little more, um, they relate to each other a little stronger with the softness of tone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does the first slide that we saw with the examples of the wayfinding little flag signs, does that have this color? I mean, the, that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Good point that Lindsay makes. But yeah, it should be. Yeah, it's brown. brown. It's supposed to be brown like you see along the highway. You know, when you're driving on the highway and you see a historical site. Oh, um, yeah. Sign for a historical site. It's supposed to be reminiscent of that color. Why aren't we using that on the on there then well it's emily good. dickinson it's it's a little touchy because oh, it's their owns, they own the emily dickinson museum and they've given us permission to put a sign on their property and i think they want to stick pretty closely to what their logo is so we'd have to talk to them about whether they'd be willing to um, allow us to change the background color here um, which is a conversation that we can have with them yeah, I can see why they wouldn't. 
and they'd Perfect. still have their logo and the same words. It would just be slightly tinted more like their museum is. <laughs> what if it were tinted? What if it were tinted the color of the band at the bottom of the sign that's there now? So Ben, can you show that sign again? Uh, yeah. Oops. Yeah. There. What if it were tinted? Anything would help. Color? Yeah, or the color of the fence, which is essentially that that kind of creamy thing mm -hmm. you're looking at. Yeah. So we'd have to have that mocked up and then show it to them. Alan, what do you think? Is Seth still with us? And I realized that was question was for me. It kind of broke up. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we're just, you know, we were trying to navigate that conversation with them and their interests. Um, and this was developed before doing the directional, um, the full directional, um, series that you will maybe get to. Um, and so in the context of other signs, right on a post with a bunch of other signs, um, I think that, it, that cue of the color of the brown color with the historical site I think is an extra layer that helps people sort through information especially in a car um, moving you know in this case maybe it's not as crucial because there's not a whole lot of other things being processed at the same time um, so you know that said um, I think maybe if we want if we're talking about um, softening that white or just trying to trying to create a less a less jarring kind of combination of colors um, I, I could see that logic um, so again I think it's a conversation that we have to has to circle back to them as well it sounds like have they seen the sign the whole the total sign have the Emily Dickinson no no they have not nope. it's sort of I don't know. I, it's like, it seems not quite appropriate for, for the whole sign troubles me in that location for Emily Dickinson. Seemed like she'd be a bit more graceful. I mean, uh, not that the old, the old sign looks terribly worn out, but uh, I want, I, I think this is going to be too late, but maybe it, what's troubling me is the, sharpness of the edges mm -hmm. and if if the sign if we had time to rethink it i would suggest maybe rounded edges something that is a more just a slightly softer approach to the whole thing because man i don't know they're going to like that sign on their property but um I, if they have to you know that's up to them i feel mm -hmm. like it's, it, jane yeah. wald was part of the original group that Mm -hmm. um worked with seth yeah but that was way Sign. back and she Family. Didn't Sign. Sign. yeah that's right that was way back that was a long time ago i mean i i think it's as simple as as cost honestly i think um you know we had looked at and and considered uh, more elaborate forms and things that had more historical you know shapes and embellishments sure. like that. yeah yeah i realized that Just economy, the... which is yeah unfortunate and we decided to pursue a really um yeah, you know, you know, clean approach but i mean i agree with you <laughs> you know if, there, if we were starting fresh today and we had a uh, unlimited budget i would i would cert we'd certainly want to consider that something yeah. with pillars or columns and caps and things yeah, i wasn't yeah i wasn't thinking of like so much the embellishment is just that it's boy it's so it's rectangular Part of that is because it's an image that's been imposed across a photo. It won't look that way when it actually is a three-dimensional object. I think part of what you're seeing is the fact that it's a layered image. Yeah. I also yeah. think I appreciate the slender, really the slenderness of the form and how that relates in a subtle way to the um, balusters of the fence. Uh -huh. I think that there's something, um, and there's also a really strong simplicity to the to the balusters of the fence. So, 
I don't know. I, I think it could be fine. Honestly, I think there is a sharpness to this that a sharpness and a slenderness and simplicity that that doesn't feel that out of place in my opinion with respect to the sign. I think it's more, I think it's probably what Jan said that it's kind of this image without depth um, because it's, you know, um, it won't be experienced that way. Um, and I think also that um, core 10 steel, that is that what you're planning to use still? That was the original dream. It's just not, it's not affordable enough. So we're trying to, trying to mimic that. Yeah, so I think that that aesthetic at least has a kind of aged quality that that does reflect, um, you know, the historic nature of the town and these settings. Um, so I I think personally, I just I'm just visually responding a little. It's it's just a little the the white on black or black on white just kind of like catches my eye in a way that feels like it doesn't it doesn't quite relate. Um, it looks like a sticker kind of like mm -hmm. out of context with the. Um, with the rest of the sign, but otherwise I, I think it actually looks really nice. Um, what, a couple just really simple comments, I would say, um, I'm not sure if there wants to be more space between those two signs. I think you guys can figure that out. I mean, I know that you had it all dimensioned um, in the, I don't know if it makes sense to kind of give them a little more space between the two. Um, but, and then obviously the, the arrow size would be the same. I think it's just an optical illusion that the black looks longer. Um, but obviously those would want to match up in the font size. So yeah, I, I, I think it looks nice other than maybe some of the color uh, colors being a little off. So if I'm hearing you all, it sounds like the board would be interested in um, playing with that white to make that a little more creamy, if you will, or find uh, a color that's complementary to the fence, or go back to the family, or go back to this sign um, and use the entrance background, or go back to the family of signs slide and look at that brown sign? Or is that too? One, one thing that's nice about that just uh, and I think we could argue color for a long time but because there's pros and cons either way but I, I do think one thing that's nice about this is that it, it's dark enough that allows the white to be readable mm -hmm. where if we go lighter then we're going to yeah, end yeah, up with right. a black lettering in order to get that same right. kind of contrast so it's just a give and take um it might be I think it would be interesting to see this color with the white um, and if there, you know, if there is something that kind of relates, maybe the tone of it kind of relates back to the signage, or so, sorry, the fence color that's there, just to kind of blend it, a little, or, or not blend it, but like, you know, relate it back. Um, I think that that could be a nice option. So just so I'm clear, you're suggesting that the Emily Dickinson Museum sign take on that kind of cocoa color, and then the lettering and the logo be white. Is that what you're suggesting, Lindsay? Um, generally speaking, yes, but I would say that the only caveat is that the white be whatever the white is that you guys decide on overall from our previous discussion. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Alternatively, I could imagine that this color, this white becomes like was discussed, this kind of softer um, tan color and then the lettering would need to be black. How do other members feel about uh, Lindsay's suggestion? So using sort of like a cocoa color um, that was shown in the earlier slide of, uh, for the historical signs and then using a whatever the finalized cream slash white uh, lettering, si uh, lettering color would be. It'd be worth looking to, to see if the letters stand out. I like the idea of the the background changing, but I'm not sure. You, Lindsay, do you think that the white will pop out? It looked out? like it stood out pretty well in the wayfinding signs. I mean, I thought that was yeah, pretty readable. Right. And it did pretty much in that green one, too. Yeah. It, it will depend on whatever that white becomes. Right. It's white, white or... I agreed that the lettering on the directional part would stay white, and that if anything changed, it would be that the larger Amherst sign would have would go lighter 
than uh -huh. that warm cream, but we were leaving the white on the other because Seth was saying there's so many different colored backgrounds, you need that contrast. That wasn't going to change, yeah. right, Seth? Okay, now we've got two backgrounds. We're talking about the Emily Dickinson two strip. Questions. I think what I'm hearing is that um, <laughs> there's, there's a proposed solution that uh, emphasizes all type everywhere on all signs be the same. Like whether that ends up being white or an off-white of some sort, that it at least be uniform. Um, I'll, I'll throw in some color theory there just to say white is going to look different on every single background color, regardless of what, of it being the same, just because yeah. of optics. But they weren't, they weren't <laughs> saying the big signs and the little signs had to be the same. We were uh, just saying the big sign should maybe be not quite so yeah, creamy. Yeah, yeah. But leave white or black as you were, as you will, on the small signs for clarity. Sure. I was going to come, so that's good to clarify because I was going to come back to you with an option with everything white, with the Amherst, Massachusetts white, and everything staying white on the small signs, and then a version where everything's off white. So just like, just <laughs> not pure white. <laughs> just. <laughs> Slightly, slightly tinted, a little bit warmer, a little bit tanner, not nothing drastic, nothing that I would, something that I would still feel comfortable in terms of legibility putting out and testing on these different colors, but something that's just not white. Okay. I think in an ideal, an ideal scenario, those would, the, there would be a single color that worked for both. Um, it may not be totally necessary and if, it may be unachievable, but my feeling is that if we can find one that, that works, uh -huh. Well, on both, it might just simplify and unify the overall then, signing approach. If you do that, then the background of the strip that says Emily Dickinson is going to have to be that darker cocoa because you're not going to have enough contrast unless it's dark enough. Or it can be black. I feel like, you know, with thinking about the um, post signs, that a great deal of work has gone into providing a consistent message. Um, from sign to sign and that when we see blue we understand we're looking for parking and this is the one place where the Emily Dickinson Museum has a really different approach and that if we are thinking about the whole purpose of wayfinding um, and creating that simple package that my first vote would be for this to be white on brown um, if that's not um, something that the Emily Dickinson folks would approve of, and we don't know yet because they haven't been asked, um, then I think a second choice would be any of the other things that we've talked about. But it seems mm -hmm. clear to me that we want to create a family and stick with it. Mm -hmm. It might be really beautiful to have that bottom sign be a brownish color with white lettering. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah. Seth, Seth do, you, do you know offhand like how this brown color relates to this brown color? It's this seems a little bit like richer almost, right? It's so like, closer to a burgundy. It's got more yeah. red in it. Um, yeah. The other one is really as close as I could get to like historical culture. Yeah. Um, because it's so familiar and people know to look for it. And so yeah. it's smart to always build on those, those associations when we can. Mm -hmm. um, and this would be the one, actually, I don't know. We haven't been through, I don't think, I have clear in my head if any of the other welcome signs are going to have anything besides town center panels on them or not. No, they won't. Only one. Okay, so this is our one situation where mm -hmm. we're yeah. those bounds next to each other, and hopefully it's, you know, I would I think it'd be pleasant, but um, you know, again, I'm I'm uh, leaving the politics to Chris. <laughs> 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 But so, uh, you know, the other thing to propose to them, Chris, if you are, we're talking about strategizing this right now is, you know, if they, if they push back on the white on brown to coordinate with all other signs, we show them the whole family, we say, here's the system, and this is why this makes a lot of sense. One concession I could imagine making is that the logo panel, just the square around the logo is white with its, with its logo. So they, they're sort of like a, there's a consistency in the branding there. They have that little square to kind of say, okay, mm -hmm. you've got your brown directional sign and you've got your logo on there, pure, like no alterations to the logo. So that would be sort of, I, that would be my back pocket <laughs> idea. Yeah. Um, anyway. so maybe I don't think my Jane wouldn't like that because it seems to me it'll look a lot richer. This looks kind of like there was something else and we just took some white tape and put it over it. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
I think it'll look much richer and it won't jump out. It's right now it's sticking out and you're not even seeing Amherst first. You're seeing Emily Dickinson Museum first. And then well, yeah, exactly. You you just got to the core of it, right? I know. Right? <laughs> I mean, maybe Jane will want that, but it seems to be that she wants something tasteful too. Yeah. Yes, that's what we're selling. Yeah. So Seth, would you be willing to meet with me and Jane and uh, Ben would need to be there too and talk to her about this? Of course, yeah. If we can okay. coordinate our schedules, yeah. All right, let's try to do that. So, okay. <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> and just to repeat, so uh, you're looking for a background like a cocoa color that is uh, similar to that slide that shows the family of signage exactly. and then the lettering, would the lettering be white or would white. the lettering yeah. be the sort of combo Creme whitish. Creme. I guess like, it's just using the the right. styling of those historical cultural yeah. things as is. Mm -hmm. The white on tan. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is this sign going to be uh, installed into the stone that you stone work that you had shown on the other slide, I or just it's going to go right down <laughs> into the ground? Uh, I'm not sure. I've been a strong advocate for landscaping and flowers and things, but I think that sounds like it's going to be a volunteer-led <laughs> effort, probably, or donated or something. Okay, so, so the posts are going to go right to the, we're going to see it like that, the post and the ground. Yeah, potentially. Okay. What do you think? Potentially. It depends on what the DPW is willing to do, because I think that's who's going to be installing these signs for us. So they may yep. be feeling very artistic on the day that they're putting these in and they may not be. We have to work with them. Well, they all would be the same consistent look where, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, okay. I keep it simple. So uh, this is one of the three locations or this is the fourth different location? This, this is, is one of, this is one of four. Okay, so this one and then where are the- one. This is the modified location? Or is this where are the others? Yeah, you um, mentioned three, yeah. and then there's one that's modified. So look at the brown welcome dots are where the signs are okay. proposed. Um, so sorry, hold on. Um, so do this. This is the Dickinson one we were just looking at. Okay. The section of triangle and amity. All right. Um, this is a second sign that would be kind of on the south. Um, east corner of the commons okay. as you approach on Route 9. Um, this is a third sign that would be um, on the you know eastbound side of Route 9 um, as you're coming up the hill. And then here's a fourth sign that would be, um, this is at the intersection of the, this would be Amity and Amity. University Drive. Right. Near that shopping plaza. Yeah. Um, where uh, I guess Rafters isn't there anymore. Rafters used to be there, but um, yeah, but it, that would also be on the eastbound side as you come up the hill. Um, and so I have, that's kind of an overview and then here are the kind of specific locations. Um, so this is the one on the commons. It would kind of be where that path splits off that cuts diagonal across the commons mm -hmm. um and here's kind of i i don't i didn't have the software to do like a photo rendering so i just kind of drew a square roughly uh the, the height and size of the sign um but it would kind of be in this little wedge right here um in front of the telephone pole there's a little bit of a slant here down um so we'd have to counteract okay. that um so would that green sign that says Amherst Center next right then be taken down? Are we going to eliminate some of the plethora of signs? We can ask DPW to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it, I would, it looks that. it's going to be all cluttered. I mean, yeah. we don't need one more sign there if we're going to keep that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there's, if I'm, there's like the, the old wayfinding sign, there's still re wayfinding system, there's still remnants of that downtown right. as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this would be the commons location as you're approaching from Route right. 9. Um, this is the, yep, the Dickinson location. Yeah. Just saw that. Um, this is the intersection of Amity Street and University Drive. 
And which side is that going to be on now? Is that going to, uh, I know we discussed that before. Which it could be on the northeast corner. Is it now on the southeast corner? It's you on the southeast corner. We tried to um, speak to the university. We did speak to the university about putting it on their property on the north side okay. of the road, and they okay. would not have anything to do with it. They okay. do not want that sign on their property. They already okay. have some signs um, okay. welcoming people to the university there. So they. So this is really the only option that we have in the decisions that need to be made are exactly how to place this and how to angle it so it's appropriately seen from um, University Drive going north and from Amity Street going east. Will you be able to see the one on Route 9 um, when you're at the signal for University Drive so that you'll know that going to town you should go straight because if you turn left and come up University and you don't see this, you'd end up on UMass campus instead of turning right on Amity. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. Right. So that sign will be visible when you're at the signal at University and Route 9. Yeah. Well, I yes, <laughs> we think it would be, but um, we're also exploring another alternative, which is, um, I think it's Haskins Meadow. Is that right, Ben? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hawk Hawkins Meadow. Hawkins Meadow. So that's an apartment complex. Yeah. It's just uh, west of the intersection that Jen was referring to. And um, mm. we're asking them if they would agree to having a sign on their property, yeah. but that may not work. Yeah, the Route 9 location's gotten a little bit more complicated because this is a state right of way. Um, so we have to get permission, like an access permit from that DOT. Um, it's not local, locally controlled. And so, um, and then there's also proposed construction on this. A stretch of Route 9 uh, for, you know, in the coming years, months, I'm not sure. Okay. But um, so in conversations with them, and this oh. is, a, yeah, this is a blown up construction document. We had initially proposed the sign to this red area right here. And then they informed us that I guess this, there's like a giant pole that's going to be placed here for the new signals. Hmm. Um, so they proposed we move it back here. Um, and they'd be willing to grant the permit for that. Um, and to Jan's point, that um, it's pushing it further back from the intersection. Um, so you, 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 I mean, you'd obviously see it if you're coming straight, but. Um, if you're in the left-hand turn lane, you wouldn't see it. I yeah. Don't, yeah. Yeah. And then this is the kind of rendering that they provided just to show it. I think this is a little taller than um, the six foot sign. Also, you've sign, crossed, but. you've almost finished crossing the intersection by then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, actually, I sent an email today to the owners of Hawkins Meadow to see if they'd be willing to place a sign on their property. Are you all familiar where, where that is? Yeah. Uh, kind of right after the Amherst Motel entrance. Right. Um, not, not Amherst Motel anymore. <laughs> Nice. And the property owner that you might be able to reach out to is uh, uh, You Drive South LLC, which is owned by Barry Right. Rock. Yeah, Chris mentioned that too. Yeah. I was a little reluctant to say that that would be possible because I think they probably would want to, well, I mean, we can ask them, yeah. but they still have to build their whole um, development yeah. there. And they're not going to want to sign there while they're under construction. They may want to see what it's going to be like before they agree to having a sign there. Sure. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the, the development that's going where that house is on the corner, the brick yeah. house? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. If it went there, would that be soon enough um, to, catch, to catch people so that they would go straight, right? Because that was what I was thinking that corner development would be. Well, it's better than on the other side of the intersection if you put it at the very. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I don't think there's any good place for this sign. <laughs> But I'm wondering, though, uh, in all seriousness, if it, if we had a, a little piece uh, that they would give us where that apartment building is going, would, would that be soon? Would that be enough time for a person coming into Amherst for the first time to make a decision? You know what uh, I mean? Uh, yeah, I'm sure Seth and Ben and Chris would have to look into that. Yeah, just that makes sense. For factoring in like speed and the and yeah then, i mean like, yeah i don't know so, there's really not a good 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe, it could work. It could actually work. Who knows? Maybe, I mean, it's, well, it's important to have a nice looking sign coming up Route 9 uh, if we can. But if we can't, maybe we should put that sign someplace else. Where's the actual boundary? Is it where the sign says, welcome to Amherst? Or is it before that? Is it west of that? You mean the town boundary? Yeah. The town boundary is west of Spilut Motors. You know where Spilut Motors is? I the middle Motors of Big Y. Is? Yes, so, that's right, about there. Because Big Y is split in half, yeah. Well, it's also west oh, yeah. of, um, it's west of the pizza place. So the pizza place is in Amherst. Which pizza Domino's, you mean? Domino's, Dom right. Domino's. Oh, is oh yeah, here pizza. it is. So it Welcome actually, to, yeah, uh, beyond uh, this, beyond uh, the Greenleaves um, driveway, yeah. and then all the way on the other side of, um, there it is. Yeah. Okay. So, and we can't put it there or somewhere close to there. Can, would Greenleaves let us put one in, like on the lawn right there? <laughs> Greenleaves is very problematic. Uh -huh. <laughs> also, I think, that, I think that would be too far away from the intersection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the Hawkins Meadow has this big expanse of lawn. Well, this is Hawkins Meadow. I can't even know what yeah. that is. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a good like, idea. We had for, we had, I was thinking like somewhere here. Yeah. yeah. Which if it's either at the eastern edge of their property or the western edge of the development that Roberts is doing. So yeah. same basic place. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you're in the right lane and you're not a good driver, you may think it's too late to move over to the left lane, <laughs> but at least you'd know to go straight to town. Yeah. No. I mean, if you're going to the university, you're using your Google Maps anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask. I think I'm just from I've only, I have not sat in on all of the siting uh, conversations, but I know early on one of the main concerns was trying to help direct or capture, if you will, um, visitors to the to the university, right? So people who Go to go to UMass, and they're in and they're out, and they don't even touch downtown or don't even know it's there, right? Like getting more of those people in town. Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm thinking through this, I'm thinking anyone who um, takes a left here on University Drive is set on getting to UMass anyway. They're going to take that turn, and then they they are going to see that sign at the foot of That's Amherst. Right. They're going to see the next sign. And Maybe. Hopefully, we'll be like, oh, okay, great. I'll you know, as I come back after I drop my kid off at the dorm, maybe I'll circle back and I'll take that turn up the hill. Um, I guess where I'm going with that is that everyone else, anyone who's not intent on making that drop off or getting to campus is going to be going straight anyway. And then, um, you know, it's surprising to me, um, that people wouldn't notice or think to, you know, that see downtown to their left and head into town, but is, is there value in having something at the top of the hill there before that intersection with 116 to, let people know like you can turn left here and there's a whole lot going on yeah <laughs> in the same way that we're putting at the corner of the commons to catch people on route nine going both ways to say like head this way to town um because i mean this corner down at university and and route nine has been, been tough it's really tight and it's yeah hard. yeah like, i don't know if there's somewhere up here that makes so we, we were going to propose like a directional post sign on yeah. at this corner. Um, yeah. Oops, I want to back up a little bit. <laughs> we have to be careful here because this yeah. is all owned by Amherst College right. and we did approach them at one point in the past about putting a welcome sign here and they were not um, yeah, positive not, about that location at all. They, they were very negative about that. But it's going to be right across the intersection on the left there, right? On the common. So it will, once you get up here, you'll see you won't see that one from this direction, though. Yeah, it's going to be facing south or southwest, isn't it? No. It's on the other corner. It's on the other corner. Coming, You're coming up from the other. Oh, it's coming for when yeah. you're driving west. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I know that those of you who grew up in these kind of towns automatically think, oh, I'll see it and it'll be town. You know, when I first came in, I'm from Los Angeles. I thought I was in a residential neighborhood. I didn't think I'd be <laughs> in town yet. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't town, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so allow for people coming from Boston or New York or something. This doesn't look like downtown. 
<laughs> Sorry. There's a common. It's clearly town. <laughs> but uh, Ben and Chris, you had you were uh, thinking about citing a directional sign uh, in this vicinity that would have a arrow that would say downtown or Amherst yeah. left, and then Amherst College right, and Amher uh, Hampshire and Amherst right, and. Mm -hmm. I think a directional sign takes up a lot less room, so mm -hmm. we might be able to get them to agree to yeah. that. But to putting, you know, a sign that's four right. feet wide up here, they just three of the four corners belong to Amherst College. Is mm -hmm. that right? No, the two corners on the east side of one sixteen belong to the town, and the town. Oh right, uh, because that's a continuation of the common that they yes. use. That, yeah, Amherst College maintains it. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what is a maybe we should be looking at those green sign like what does that green sign say with an arrow? Is that Amherst? Amherst? Net 116. There you go. Oh, yeah, Amherst then, Center. That says Amherst Center. How, how dumb are these drivers? There's your sign. Well, but the idea is that if we have a new directional system, that would come down and the wayfinding would replace it. So everything, yeah. I, well, I, yeah, there's two, yeah, I don't, yeah. I didn't realize that easy to take a directional. Yeah, that would be a good place. So for tonight's purposes, we're here to really look at firstly the design of the wayfinding of the of the welcome sign, and then uh, provide provide recommendations for the design, and then also for the locations. So what are is that correct? So what are people's yeah. uh, thoughts about the the welcome sign at U University Drive? Um, uh, if it were to remain uh, as proposed, so I guess is that where the blue is yeah. that what's being currently proposed? That's what that's Mass DOT is like willing to agree to at mm -hmm. this point. So, so what does the board feel about that location? And if the town can get uh, and then a second sort of location, if you will, if if people are agreeable, is um, the Hawk. Hawkins Meadows uh, or the U or the Barry Roberts property somewhere within that vicinity. That Whatever. Be, good. That would be the best. I think the best. Yeah, that, that should be our recommendation if you yeah. can possibly pull it off. Yeah. So do people recommend this the blue location? Not really. Jane, no. Catherine. Uh, what, uh, what, uh, the what, blue uh, as shown on the slide. Uh, what do folks feel about the blue location? I just worry about the construction schedule. I don't. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. Yeah. I think that that could really interrupt. I think it could. And maybe we could get it on the. Yeah. They. They had. They had their construction engineer. You know, look at this as well. Um, and so, you know, they didn't say explicitly, but um, like they were well aware of the construction. So would people Sorry. feel that uh, your first choice would be the the other location that we looked at, um, Hawk Meadows slash Barry Roberts? And if that didn't work out, then would folks be agreeable to this being the second option? Yeah. If that's the only other one. Yeah, there it is. seems like that would be the only option. Yeah. I'm just trying to move this along. Of yeah, move it along because. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to type it. I'm going to write first. Uh, first option, um, Hawkins Hawkins Meadows. Right. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, the name of the school in. Stranger Things. In um, Stranger Things. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay. So Hawkins Meadows slash Barry Roberts is your. It, and and um, please chime in. I guess we will do a motion and stuff and such, so you vote. And then the second um, second runner-up location would be the blue spot, which, which is? is on on um, Northampton Road, as indicated on the slide. Yeah. Okay. Um, do folks want to? We can wait to do uh, motions at the very end. But right. is is that what I'm in general he hearing from everyone? Well, isn't there a third option? Instead of having it so far back, um, would they be willing to let us put it in an angle on this corner across the street then? So it'd be closer to the intersection? Like then, where that 93 is? Oh, um, is that a lane? That is a lane right there. Yeah, that would, that, yeah, well, yeah. 
can't do this up, up on the sidewalk then, whatever. Um, so that at least when you're sitting at the intersection, you could see it because it's so far east. I don't see the point. You know? Ben, can you go to Google Street? Because I feel that, doesn't a realtor own the building there? Yeah. I feel like that's right against the sidewalk. I could be wrong. Oh, oh so right, right there. Right there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, what do folks feel about that? Well, there's so much stuff over there. Look how many signs there are there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. This, I don't, I don't know if you would really. I think it has to be. It's a pretty wide road. Like, I'm not sure if you're going. How about up in uh, th this other corner, the, uh, what would that go through the intersection and right? What about in the median? Can we not use that median to the right on? Um... Oh, somebody will hit it with a car. <laughs> yeah. No, no, not that. <laughs> not there. On When you take a right on to go into Snell. Um, there. It, Wait, I think that would be a, a uh, blocking. Yeah, user. and they're re redesigning that, aren't they? A bit. So. Yeah. Uh, not. Not that piece. Well, actually, maybe slightly, slightly, maybe. It wouldn't but, have to stick out into the street there. It could be behind where that black car is. You know, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, right there. Wouldn't that work? Would they let us put it there? I don't know, Chris, whether you've ever talked to him about the rights of that. That strip, you know. Yeah, I mean, we probably wouldn't, couldn't. No, not this, there. But yeah, uh, but yeah, over there. Yeah. I know that seems a little far off if you're driving up. Yeah. Well, it's a lot further west than what they're proposing. Yeah. I mean, just to the right of the signal post, you know, mm -hmm. the yeah. little trigger. Yeah. 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 I think that would be a, a conversation with the DPW superintendent and whether something that like that could be allowed. I, I, Chris, do you have any experience? I have with... no idea whether they would go for that. I suspect that they're going to consider it a, an obstruction. Yeah, um, snow plowing. But it's also going to be wow. a visual obstruction to people entering and exiting that yeah. um, mm -hmm. road there. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, if you don't like my idea, then go back to the original <laughs> motion. <laughs> okay, so, so with that, it would be, um, the uh, no one can see my finger pointing at my screen, but it would be, uh, if you see, in, uh, I guess, heading east, um, Ben, if you can indicate where that blue spot would be. Oh, yeah, that um, would be like here, probably, somewhere. Yep. So, so it's going to be a sidewalk here now, yeah. So there or somewhere at the boundary between Barry mm -hmm. property and the uh, Hawkins Meadow yeah. property, which is basically around where this vegetation is, mm -hmm. a little right to the right mm -hmm. or yeah. whatever. west, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I think that's, in my mind, the best location if you can get it as far up on Hawkins Meadow as you can. Yep. So. Okay. All that right. Good so idea. Guilford came up with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, there's no other signs around and it's nice no. and green. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. nice. Especially right. the vegetation behind it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So can we go move on to the next location, which would be, did we discuss, well, we did briefly discuss the Amity and University yeah. Drive. Right. Are folks okay with that as as shown? Yeah, yeah. university. Oh, yeah. Well, is it facing due west or is it tilted to the south at all? Um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit tilted, so like people coming this way can see it. Mm. It's not ideal, but I, you know. It's like we've got these signs and none of them are in like really good locations. Mm. It feels mm -hmm. like if you've already seen the welcome to down on Route 9, both directions, maybe this should just be the wayfinding. A direct oh. sign? Yeah, with directionals. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't yeah. need that because it's not really facing anybody major coming, you know, it's not a major road coming along there. It would save money. Chris? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I think that's a good solution. Other folks? Maybe. Oh, I totally agree. Okay, Catherine agrees. Anyone else? <laughs> One less sign like that. <laughs> so are you saying... You can I, can I just say, I'm sorry, I have to go. Um, is there... I apologize. I, um, I just need to go. So it, is there anything that I can um, comment on or motion on that needs resolving in the, like, a couple minutes? No. No, I think... Are you okay? Yes, vote with us, and we'll use it how we want to. Okay, I mean, I think you've heard my comments overall, yeah, and right. I apologize, but I do have to leave, so. Sure. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Bye. Thanks, Lindsay. Okay. All right, so if I'm hearing correct, uh, I've heard from two people saying, oh, Erica, how, how do you feel uh, if this, if this uh, sign at Amity and New Drive was instead a directional sign? I'd be fine with that. Um, there is something uh, kind of romantic about marking the four corners of downtown, but I think unfortunately we don't have the kind of downtown that has that clarity. Um, and uh, if at this point um, we could direct people to the downtown, but then also point out some other um, opportunities to engage museum sites and things, then a wayfinding sign would be fine. The wayfinding signs, they're printed on both sides, right? Yeah. Well, not uh, necessarily, because in some cases they have different destinations on the opposite side. Um, but for this one, it could show both coming down University and going up it that, that downtown is that -a way. Mm -hmm. right? yep. I was, yeah, and I, to, to that point, I was going to suggest, I don't know if this is, this is not saving money, this is adding money, is to do a two-sided <laughs> welcome sign here that faces north and south. Mm -hmm. So you could have it perpendicular to the yeah. and have it read really clearly from both sides. But that's, I, honestly, I think, I think a directional will be fine. But, uh -huh. but if we're looking to optimize visibility and capture that college-bound traffic, that seems like a crucial intersection and seems like maybe a place to Oh, yeah, two sided. Well, right now it's facing um, eastbound traffic, neither north nor south. Well, right, or it's facing right eastbound, exactly, right, which is yeah. not busy. So if you had a directional sign that had one of the flaps was printed back and front to face to point east, oh, yeah. and then one of the flaps was painted to face sure, to yeah. point north to front. Ah! You know what I mean? Yeah, you do the all four directions. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I can't say it all. Yep. Now, so we've heard from board members saying it might make more sense that, that this location be directional and then it would be double-sided to accommodate mm -hmm. whatever is, you know, in that direction. Now, does uh, any Ben and Chris, so, uh, well, firstly, Seth, you said that Financially, I mean, I, d does it matter on a financial perspective whether we swap this out from wayfind it, from a, a welcome sign to a directional? I don't know if that's even something money. that we need to consider, but. Yeah, it will save money. Yep. It will. Mm -hmm. But okay. is there, we have enough money. I think we have, oh, we got a bid from um, ArtFX was around $30,000. So we have, you know, $50,000 left. So we could conceivably um, put a two paneled sign here and have one panel facing Amity Street going from eastbound direction and one panel facing University Drive if okay. we wanted to do that. It'd be like an L shape. Yeah, there is um, enough money. Be, well, I think okay. it would be the, it would be cheaper to do just a single sign, a single, single pair of posts and just have the two-sided text so that... Yeah, but that only handles north-south. It doesn't handle people coming from the west. That's true. I was, I was letting them go. <laughs> Not that many. That's how I enter town, but I don't... know <laughs> where the white truck is. And the white truck yeah. is coming yeah. from the west. Well, I mean, yeah. what Chris said, you know, if you had an L shape, so the truck would see one painting towards town and then your other one could still be painted on both sides uh well, for north south maybe could yeah sure or you actually just do two oh, we have twenty thousand dollars to burn here right chris <laughs> that's right 
what we need to do instead of the one on Route Nine at Hawkins, we do like a big banner over the whole intersection. Yeah. Yeah. And well, let Seth and I take it on. We'll spend the money, not to worry. Yeah, it's not my money. I'm happy. And, and, yeah. and then so. Although I am, you know, d hearing that people would prefer directional, is anyone in this meeting, staff or members, or here's your opportunity to to make your case of yes, no, we still want the welcome sign. Am I hearing anyone that is, still wants to advocate for that? Well, I see a space for it right by that tree and uh, right there. Yeah. So. Well, if we could have a double one. I mean, an L-shaped one, like Chris said, one side painted both sides and the other one, one side. I mean, that'd be great. That'd be even be better than a directional sign. But I just didn't know if we could afford that. Yeah. I mm -hmm. So I think let's try to go for the L-shaped welcome sign here. Okay. And if we can't get that for some reason, we'll go with the post directional sign. How's that? Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Yeah, we just so see that would be the oh. first choice. So first choice is the L-shaped welcome. Second choice, if for some reason that just doesn't make sense for a variety of reasons, then the would be a directional post sign. Yeah. Double-sided. Okay. Makes sense, yep. I'm writing this down. If I don't write it down, then I don't remember. Yeah. Okay, so now the fourth, let's see here. Did we, we talked about Emily Dickinson's sign location. It'll be the fourth one. And what is the fourth one? I can't remember. Like on the commons. On the and the, we talked about that. And and w was everyone fine with the that the town the southeast? Uh, well, if they could clear out some of those other signs, I mean, there's a there's a telephone pole and there there's that <laughs> that telephone mm -hmm. pole uh, and throwing our sign in there. Just I mean, it should you know, like the whole thing to look good. Uh, I'd be surprised if we can. Oh yeah, the town will just take this green thing out. I'd be very surprised. Well, the Holyoke next left is going to have to stay. Exactly. But the Amherst Center, which is already crooked anyway, right? Down. If they take, yeah, that would help a bit. That would be fine. Yeah, it'd be all right. I guess. Fine there. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this sign is this one is good. Yeah. Okay. So I think we have now spoken, we've now, you've all have discussed each of the locations. We've just discussed the designs. Mm -hmm. um, were there any other uh, parts of this that we were going to talk tonight? Um, there's the whole wayfinding system downtown, the directional posts. Okay. That, directional that posts and their locations. We, we could come back at another time if people, you know, don't have time to finish that tonight. Basically, I'm going to, you know, there's like 30 more slides presenting um, the locations downtown and kind of the proposed uh, destinations and directions that would be pointed out at each location. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's a lot. Uh, so it is kind of a lot. Yeah. I, uh, but going along with that, and I hear this from people and I observe this myself, is there's so many old cluttery signs yeah. in down, uh, and down. I wouldn't endorse any more signs until there is a definite proposal to remove some of the rest of those signs because that's re just is ridiculous. Yeah. So, signs, yeah. are folks uh, still? Um, I don't know. This meeting started at five. It's six thirty. Do folks uh, want to delve into the directional signs tonight, or should this be continued to a future meeting meeting date? I, I I'm I'm available. I now. hate to make all staff members come to another meeting, especially Chris and Ben, because they don't usually have to come to our meetings. Can we do this efficiently so they can finish off? Yeah. Uh, how's everyone else feel? Sure. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Let's let's see how we go and let's aim to be efficient. How about that? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, I'll just jump right in. Um, basically, uh, you know, you've seen the um, schematic for the uh, directional post system. And so for each location, um, you know, I worked with Chris and Maureen and, you know, other planning staff in general to kind of figure out what we're going to point to. Right. And, you know, what's the best way to get there? So which, which route to take? Um, and then we kind of did a site visit downtown, walk around and tried to pick, you know, some of the most important locations to intercept people. So, and again, I think um, a, a bigger topic here is like, 
you know, whether these are geared towards pedestrians or vehicles. I think that was something I kind of struggled with throughout and, you know, that affects which way they're oriented sometimes. Okay. So that's something to be conscious of. Um, so this first sign is um, along Kendrick Park. Um, I guess this is technically like Triangle Street extension bit right here. Um, and so it would be to intercept uh, people as they're walking downtown and um, pedestrian, or sorry, and cars as they enter the roundabout. Um, there was, you know, discussion of, a lot of students do take this shortcut. So we were talking about like putting a sign at this corner, um, but then, you know, a lot of drivers don't necessarily take this um, shortcut. So we were, you know, we settled on maybe just putting, putting the sign in this corner of Kendrick Park. Um, and so that would be kind of as you're approaching downtown, it would be like somewhere in this area. Um, and so what it would point out would be, whoops, um, you know, send you to downtown town hall, Jones Library. It can send you straight, you know, along Triangle Street to the Dickinson Museum, Amherst Cinema. We have the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Bid have that visitor center, um, which is an important place for people entering downtown, Amherst College and Hampshire College. Um, when you get to the bottom of Triangle Street and you hit um, Main Street, will there be something that points you to turn right if you don't see the big welcome sign in front of the property? Uh, at this point, no, I don't okay. think so. But that's, yeah. That's something to consider, certainly. I'm trying to think. There there are randomly around town a few different Dickinson signs. Um, I guess you can't go straight, so you're going to sit there trying to decide whether you go left <laughs> or right. If you turn to the right, you'll see the big sign. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I feel like these signs, um, I mean, clearly anybody who sees them, regard, regarding it, regardless of how they're moving about, will be informed, but that we probably should be thinking of these as for the pedestrians that will mm -hmm. help us to make some decisions about their location. So that if we say we are prioritizing the pedestrian reader, um, then you might want to back this one up. Um, mm -hmm. I have another kind of bigger question and that is um, who gets to decide who gets a sign? I mean, with, I, everybody loves Amherst Cinema, but I also love Hastings. Like, yeah. why are they the only nonprofit? That's a good point. I, I don't, I, there are some things, Atkins Farm shows up numerous times and Atkins Farm North, which no longer even exists. Um, was there a, a group of citizens who got to weigh in on these or people paying for their no, it was Ben and me walking around town thinking of what was important, where okay. people might want to go. And so the most, different most cars to drive in, maybe. Um, I mean, Dustin Amherst Cinema has a, have a lot of out-of-town visitors, mm -hmm. whereas yeah. Atkins Market wouldn't. Right. right? Yeah, Atkins I feel... Market has a lot of out-of-town visitors okay. also. Yeah. Hastings, does Hastings have a lot of out-of-town visitors? <laughs> Uh, I think, I mean, Amherst Cinema, Cinema is also a nonprofit, like educational institution, um, as opposed to a, you know, purely for-profit business. So I think that was part of the discussion. And I think, I can't speak to this, but I know, I think Chris mentioned that there's always a lot of calls about people not being able to find Amherst Cinema. It's a little bit tucked, tucked back. Yeah, it's hard to see. Um, I mean, if you say Atkins, couldn't then Boltwood say, well, wait a minute, what about us? We're a big, you know, out of town destination, even though they belong to Amherst College. Um, so, so how about, uh, yeah, I, I see the point here, but then how about parking? Uh, should that be on there too? Okay. Or are, we, are you signing parking areas differently? Parking is on some of these signs, but not all of them. Okay. All right. mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the signs that are like most immediate to a parking okay. lot um, do get a blue parking arrow. Why that. don't you just go through all of them, yeah. kind of one right after the other, so we can kind of see them all and see the locations, and then maybe we can have a general discussion? Yeah, yeah that sounds good. Um, okay. 
So this is a location kind of at the end of Kendrick Park, and I chose this location because um, it's a we we point out the West Cemetery throughout the wayfinding system. Um, I do know what cemetery is spelled wrong, so we will change that. Yeah. Um, that's on me. But, that's, <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, this location intercepts people and can direct them, you know, through past this new development um, to the West Cemetery. Um, and this is the first sign that's, you know, most of them are two sided. So just to give you a sense of, you know, this would be as you're moving south. And then as you're moving, coming north, you know, this is what um, you would see. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So, but if, if, Emily Dickinson Museum, you're continuing to head north. What's going to tell you to turn right at uh, Triangle? Um, so, oh wait, I think I had it, yeah, I had it backwards. So this is, yeah, if you're moving south, if you're southbound, okay. you'll see Dickinson Museum and then you'll intercept yeah, one of these. Yeah, cemetery to the left. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah you'll see one of these signs down here. Okay. Um, and so this is the another location kind of uh, as you exit the parking garage um, on Main Street in Boltwood. And so you would, um, yeah, the, and here we have like, you know, a parking sign showing up okay. here. So as you're coming west. Where is this exact? Remind me again, because. In front of Formosa? Yeah, in front of oh, Formosa. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Probably it would end up in this grass patch here. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. I was a little blurry. So another sign would be at this corner. Um, and you would, uh, you know, be sent yeah. to the town yeah. hall, um, the Amherst History Museum, right. <coughs> in these areas, UMass, straight yeah. ahead. That's the most clear of all of them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, lots of different things to point to. And then this would be if you're moving south, um, you know, it'd send you straight to Hampshire College, Amherst College. Um, right. Again, you know, the Eric Carle Museum shows up here that would send you, you know, and to Atkins. South Amherst. Now you did put Atkins there. So. Yeah, um, I think that's definitely still uh, up for. What about yeah, the British Book Center? Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah, we were, we were struggling. We wanted to, we were struggling to think of South Amherst institutions, but yeah, the Yiddish Book Center would be a great one. Um, yeah, maybe more than At Atkins. I don't know. I, I like Atkins, but yeah. That's, or maybe Atkins would like to subsidize. There you go, Jan. There's somebody who could subsidize the yeah. commercial. <laughs> but the Yiddish Book Center instead of Atkins? That yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I okay. think the visitor center is always going to be a challenge because, you know, it's it's stuck in there on South Pleasant Street. People are probably going to look for something that stands out. And they're not yeah. going to find that visitor center, but yeah, that's not you can do it. Also, I just want to say that uh, there's panels for each of these locations. So let's just pretend that the it relocates to a different location. Um, or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or any of them, um, th these panels can be swapped out in the future. Mm -hmm. And can we see the other side of this one real quick again? Sorry. Okay. And this is where we're, we possibly will be um, redoing the North Common. So where exactly are you placing it? Is it going to have to be moved if we put our North Common plan into effect? It might have to be temporarily relocated. Okay. And then put back again. Okay. Okay, so, um, yep, and then kind of opposite diagonal from that intersection, there'd be a sign here at this corner. Um, same thing, similar kind of set of destinations, um, Kendrick Park, West Cemetery, you know, and send you take a right for parking in the parking lot there. And then as you're moving south, um, sending you to the South Amherst destinations, but then also um, the Jones Library and History Museum and Town Hall. 
And so, oops, sorry. Um, this is uh, basically, you know, at the Amherst Cinema parking lot. So a lot of people do park here. And then, you know, as people walk out of the parking lot, intercepting them to send them to different destinations in Amherst. And I think, you know, this, all, this one also is visible from for drivers, like as they come into town. So it kind of serves both purposes. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, can send you straight to the Dickinson Museum, um, Town Hall, the colleges are, you know, to the right and to the left. Um, and then from the other side, you know, there's fewer destinations kind of out of town, but at this juncture, we can kind of send people to the cinema, to the library, to the history museum, or like right into this parking lot. Um, and then kind of there's three signs that are dotted around um, this Route 9 intersection, Route 9 and 116. So the first one, you know, would somehow, you know, be in this corner here, whether it's kind of up on this hill or kind of in this grass patch, we're not sure yet. You know, we would have to have that discussion with Amherst College. Um, but what we're proposing here is to kind of, um, you know, send people downtown. Um, so again, you know, this connects with our previous discussion about the welcome signs. And uh, if, you know, if people miss that welcome sign on Route 9, um, that's good. Yeah. You know, this this will point them to downtown um, and to different destinations. And to UMass downtown. if they missed yeah. the left turn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this one brings up my other question, and that's just about kind of like organizing the information that's here. Yeah. Um, if the arrows pointing to the right could all be on the right side of the sign. Yeah. The arrows mm -hmm. to the left all on the so you can kind of yeah, switch Amherst College and UMass. Yeah. I agree. yeah. And then yeah. there's the, the secondary question, which complicates things, and that is, um, should the things be grouped by typology, if you will? Should the colleges be together? This is another way to organize, but should the browns yeah. be together and the, the whites be together? I, I think that the arrows are probably more important. I agree. I think it yeah. might make them harder to read if all the browns are together and all the whites mm -hmm. are together. Good point. This way they sort of stand out from one another. Mm -hmm. But the signs on the right should point to the right and the signs yes. on the left, if possible. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, Seth did bring that to our attention. Um, and, okay, yep, so this is kind of coming along Route 9 past the commons. You know, you'll, you will have just seen that welcome sign and then, um, yeah, you'll be sent, you know, downtown, town hall, Jones Library, Dickinson, Amherst at College. At the top of the hill. Yeah, at the top of the hill. And um, again, the things, it should switch. So the things on the right side of the sign are the things to your right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New Hampshire, Eric Carl, maybe um, the Yiddish Book Center. Yeah. This college will be on the left, right? Can you do more than four or is that max? Um, so right now the lowest, uh, this is like six foot four off the, off the ground. Um, so you start, you know, you know, six foot tall people might start bumping their heads. Mm. Um, and, you know, I guess everything could be raised up. I think right now the top is at eight feet, but um, eight feet seems like, I don't know if you want too much, too much, tall, too much, um, too much height. Um, additional on top of that. Um, is there a code issue that needs to be checked on that? Or? Yeah, uh, we need to check with the um, building commissioner. For the low point. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> All righty. Um, and then this sign, let's see. Yeah, this sign is one sided. Um, and then the last sign is uh, as you're coming into town from 116. Yeah. It would be kind of like somewhere in this area um, and send you, you know, pretty much everything straight ahead except, mm -hmm. you know, Amherst College. Oh, yeah, well, that's one thing we we're talking about is like where does Amherst College actually want people to go? Because mm -hmm. when you're at this corner, you know, you're kind of surrounded by Amherst College, but we figured. 
Um, you know, so I think the admission center is down here, but I think that's something we'll, we'll reach out to them and just clarify that. Um, and, and, that and maybe step back far enough that you don't obscure those other signs at the corner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <clears throat> You know, right. that intersection where Amherst College is has, has some of the very best locations, but Amherst College is not very cooperative about letting signs go on their property. Mm -hmm. So I hope you can make it work because... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things Amherst College is going to say when they see this is they're going to see signs for Eric Carl and, and maybe the Yiddish Book Center and they're going to say, well, what about our art museum or what about our... Yeah, art there you go. The Mead. Huh? The Mead. Yeah. The mead, and what's the other one that's got the the dinosaurs, you know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, Hitchcock, yeah. Museum, too, mm -hmm. which is not owned by them, but. I mean, technically, they'll say those other museums are just part of um, Hampshire College, so why doesn't it just say Hampshire? Even though I would say, I think you're right, that more people are going to be looking for the Eric Carl uh -huh. than for the mead, but they might want that. Yeah. I think actually the Yiddish Book Center and the Eric Carl Museum own their property. Yeah, they're private, they aren't they? It from, um, from Hampshire, and in the case of the Mead, it really is more part of Amherst College. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So that'll be the answer when they say that. That's right. <laughs> And since Amherst College doesn't like signage, no, they don't like signage. Yeah, I'll be like, well, be like, oh, that's great. <laughs> All right. So is this a good um, plan overall? Sure. Looks good to me. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work. And yeah. yeah. So what I heard from folks was, well, firstly, we just need to make sure that the locations and the heights meet the zoning bylaw and building code. Uh -huh. uh, and then second is about just making, sh you know, the signs on the right should have the arrows on the right and vice versa left yeah, them. possible right yeah, if possible. correct the spelling of cemetery sure. yep um change the atkins to the yiddish yep. book center if possible that's right um what else i think uh erica mentioned maybe you know thinking about relocating this sign before kendrick park to get pedestrians right yeah i also think oh, sure yeah at uh, north pleasant street right yeah yeah, but that could also be phase two if that doesn't meet. Yeah. Um, Isn't that actually Mass Ave at that point, not North Pleasant? Where? Um, that little stretch right there. Yeah, I forget. No, it's actually North Pleasant. North Pleasant. That's North Pleasant, yeah. and then it's North Pleasant as you go left until you get to the Baptist oh, Church. It's Pleasant when you go left. That's right. Okay, yeah. I forget. That's so weird. Okay. Got mm -hmm. it. Um, plus spelling Atkins. All right. Yeah, that's that's all I got. Yeah, I think there'll be a couple other things that I'll suggest in terms of sequence, and there's some more considerations there. I think mm -hmm. in terms of what order they fall in, um, and I I don't know. I'd like I I feel like we should be in light of not only like there's some consideration around who who gets in and who who's who's in and who's out on these panels, mm -hmm. but. It, you know, if we end up with more space in certain cases, or maybe I, I feel like there might we might want to think about more visibility for parking on some of these locations. Mm -hmm. And what about Groff Park now that it's redone? People <laughs> yeah, there's like space. lots of parks. Yeah. Yeah. You've got two parks, but you don't have Groff. Right. I'm just going, thinking about our earliest, earliest conversations with this group, um, mm -hmm. and it was all about get people downtown and get them parked. And once they do that, there's a whole other system that we haven't unveiled yet yeah. for orienting people through town, right. you know, kiosks and things like that. Um, so I think it's, I think it's generous and I think it's, it can, it's not a disservice to direct right. people to the colleges and to cultural sites and things like that. Um, but anyway, I think as long as we're taking care of, get people to downtown, get them parked, uh -huh. um, you know, that should address our number one problem. Uh -huh. When do you hope to get these installed? Or when do you hope to have this finalized and installed? Well, I think we'd like to have it finalized this fall. I don't imagine it's going to get installed this fall. Um, but if we can make a good plan to get it installed in the spring, that'd be great. 
We're going to have the writer's walk in this fall, so DPW will be busy. Okay. So do Good. we need to come back to you for these things, um, for more information about the post sign and more information about the welcome signs? Would you like us to come back to you? Would you were to email us the color, right, on the welcome signs? Yeah. yeah. That seems to be the biggest. That's the only thing. That and what does Jane say about her piece on that, the one on Main Street? Okay. Yeah. Seth, you're going to do some mock ups for her with the more cocoa color and stuff? Yeah. So it sounds like it's really up to Ben and Seth and me to um, get this finalized, if you will pardon my use of that word. Um, and then uh, just show you what we're proposing yeah. to do on the color, right? Okay. All right. right. Great. Otherwise, I would say we can go ahead and say we approve the directionals pretty much as stand with whatever you need to do to them, right? And right. Yeah. About right. confidence here. Do you do you all want to make a motion to uh, to um, to give a positive recommendations with your comments regarding well further review about the um emily dickinson sign whether that background would have like a cocoa background um and that could be done in an email and then your other recommendations such as the, the welcome sign at amity and you at university drive your first choice would be an L-shaped welcome sign at that location at Amity and University Drive. And then your second if choice is, um, if that didn't work, would be a double-sided directional sign with posts. And then about the welcome sign at route, on Route 9 and University Drive, you would like that sign to be at basically where Barry Roberts and Hawkins Meadows uh -huh. Property is that's your first choice. The second choice would be as presented tonight, and then, and then we just covered all your comments um, for the directional signs, such as you know it needs to meet all in the build code, fixing the spelling mistake. Uh, Atkins is now the Yiddish uh, Museum. Uh, North uh, Ple uh, consider providing per, uh, directional signs at North at the North Ple yeah where Ben's pointing. Mm -hmm. And then um, the arrows make those um, uniformed by each sign, if possible. So, can you say um, that you recommend approval of the welcome signs as presented with the comments that Maureen made, um, and that you will um, approve the color via email, um, unless you can't come to an agreement on that and then we'll come back to a meeting because I think if we do it all by email then there's no vote to approve or to recommend right so can I just say so moved sure okay okay thank you Erica you want a second yeah I'll I'll second. a second okay okay so we need <clears throat> so I should take a um... any discussion yeah, if not, then you can do the roll call I, that? I don't want to open another. It's, it's, I have one last discrepancy I want to clear up. That's been, and I, 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 I want to also minimize how many times we have to come back. But in some places, we're on welcome signs, we've been referring to the downtown as town center. And on the directional signs, we're using downtown. And this has been like, this is an ancient oh. street. Um, I'm hoping we can settle. So I don't know, Chris, if oh, there was okay. a decision made and maybe it didn't make it to me, or if this group is the one make that choice but i just wanted to a good point i think the town manager should make the choice and what does the um sign at the roundabout say um i believe that we went downtown there downtown. Mm -hmm. so let me talk to him about that Great. All right and i just say that as somebody from a big city i think it should say town center <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no downtown oh. yeah people from town yeah. want it to feel bigger than it is Right. Yeah. And yeah. let's just say that the town manager makes his decision one way or the other. So ultimately, it's the town manager's decision, and, and I guess the DRB would, 
doesn't need to weigh in on that conversation. Well, or we could say we would prefer town yeah, center. It can be part of the motion. Yes, yes. Okay, and does everyone on the board feel that way? Like Erica? I'm, I'm behind. Yeah, um, I agree that would be. Do you agree? Okay, prefer yeah. town center, not downtown. Okay. I think the reason the bid went with downtown is because that's part of their um, email, isn't it? Amherst downtown or something? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Um, okay. Right. So can we do a roll call? Of yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, Lindsay's not here. Janet? Yes. Aye. Okay. Erica? Aye. And myself, Catherine? Aye. So. Great. Great. Thanks. Thank you, staff and Seth, for staying so long after normal hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your it's a lot of work. Very wise um, recommendations. It, it, yeah, we just we did we just I on the um, we voted on the motion. Um, yeah, but the, that was about the welcome signs. Do we have to have? It was everything that it was everything. Everything. okay. Yeah. Everything Maureen said. I just so <laughs> okay. Great, thank you. And then, the, even the center versus downtown, we added yeah. that. Okay, <laughs> and, and one last thing for the record that um, it's not for lack of love or appreciation for places like Atkins Farm that but I think that as a town yeah. we want to promote the cultural institutions yeah um, right. above the, yeah. the retail mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and actually they'll benefit beautifully anybody who goes to Hampshire College or the Eric Carl they're going to end up at Atkins because mm -hmm. so without even advertising we need more panels Hitchcock Center mm -hmm. yeah. yeah all right well okay. uh, we don't have any other items on the agenda um, does anyone have any announcements or other? Well, we didn't get public. Is there anybody from the public who's been listening yep. in? Do you uh, have anybody? Let me look. Nope. Okay. All right. Good. Seth, I'll be, we'll probably be talking about the um, writer's walk soon because the bids went out and should be in any day, I think. Oh. Right, Chris? They, they were due. That's, that's what Nate tells me. Yep. Yeah. Good. So then we'll be refining the details. So uh -huh. be in touch. Great. All right. Great. Okay. Is there any other business? Can we you don't have anything else there, do you, Maureen? No, I okay. I move to adjourn. Oh, thank you. Okay. Is there a second? <laughs> okay. Then moved and seconded by someone. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, the meeting is officially over. <laughs> it was really interesting, and, and yeah, Thank it was you a lot all. of work.